Hey, what's up guys? So today we are going to be talking about Soul Charge's potential to be banned, semi-limited, or limited on the next TCG ban list because as we know in the TCG, uh, the ban list happens more times a year than the OCG currently. So in seven weeks, we will have that new list, you know, taking effect, but it always gets released ahead of time and people always leak the list and stuff like that. So it's always good to look ahead of the game. So now that said, let's go ahead and talk about Soul Charge's potential to be hit or whatever it's going to happen to it. And I'd like to know what you guys have to say down below. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about first off what is coming out into the game that is going to be supporting Soul Charge more than anything, and that is the Pendulum Summons. This deck is all about special summoning as many monsters from your hand as possible, and you're going to have to use two cards to actually perform a Pendulum Summon, so from there you'll have four additional cards in your hand. And if you go for everything and it all gets stopped by, you know, something like a Torrential Tribute, uh, obviously if it gets bottomless then uh, you won't have any targets for your Soul Charge, but, you know, something like Torrential Tribute can get rid of everything so what do you have as an option for that if you get torrential tribute well you know soul charge definitely supports that play style of having you go all in and if it doesn't work you know hey just go for it next turn because unless you're special summoning a bunch of other pendulum monsters you're going to be losing all your cards and next turn you can't really do anything you're top decking and it's just going to be a bad time for you unless you can top deck you know all five pieces of exodia or something like a judgment dragon you're just not going to have a good time and that's where i feel like soul charge definitely doesn't warrant a ban because it supports pendulum them summons just way too much. That's at least the way I think of this, but you know, it wouldn't be su surprising to me if this card got banned completely. I mean, Return from the Different Dimension supports that playstyle of activate one card and you simply just win. Now, obviously, Return from the Different Dimension, you activate it, you can win the same turn that you activate it. And also there's that aspect where Return from the Different Dimension can never be a dead card. With Soul Charge, sometimes you might just be under a thousand life points. You will never be able to use that Soul Charge because your opponent pushed too aggressively. And that's another thing in the game where, you know, you can actually utilize because uh, certain decks like to play Soul Charge more than other decks. Something like Dragon Rulers, they love Soul Charge. Heck, they will play three of these. And so many decks are actually playing three copies of Soul Charge simply just to be able to activate it as quickly as possible because you might not need to activate three of them you just need one to actually secure victory and the thing with soul charges there's technically a uh, multiple downsides to soul charge so first off you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card the other downside is that you lose life points and the third downside is you can only activate one soul charge per turn which i think is kind of irrelevant i mean it should have been one soul charge per duel and the other fact where you can't conduct your battle phase it really should have been your opponent can't take any damage which we'll get into a little bit later but for the most part it's really interesting that we have this game where Monster Reborn is banned, but yet Soul Charge is at 3. But, I mean, if you're going to make the argument, because I kind of wanted to bring this up as well, is that, you know, Soul Charge just came out, Asian Eyes, why would they hit this? Well, I mean, think of Sixth Sense. That card came out, and then shortly after, it was banned. But I am so, so glad this, this card is gone, because Soul Charge obviously has a downside. This card doesn't really have a downside. This card can literally make a game by just rolling a dice, oh, draw 6. So that's a plus 5, and at that point, I mean, what if you're your opponent MSTs this card, that is a plus six if you draw six cards. And at that point, uh, there's just way too much free advantage in the game. And I mean, sometimes I feel like Konami doesn't really understand their game too much. I feel like they just kind of just make cards and they ban cards on coin flips. I really feel like sometimes that is what they do. Uh, because I mean, we have this game where Stratos is banned, yet we happen to have Madolce Magdalene at three, which searches out, you know, Angeli, which is at three, which does much more, you know, than Stratos. So sometimes I, I, I don't even, I can't even read Konami. They just kind of flip coins, I swear, and that's how they decide, you know, what gets banned in the game. But generally, they'll care towards what, you know, players hate to play against because, um, you know, whatever is doing, you know, topping events back to back over and over, that is usually what they hit. And there's a ton of decks that actually don't even play Soul Charge, but I feel like Soul Charge is a card that anything can play. And now I kind of want to talk about a bunch of the other cards you bring out with Soul Charge that don't even care about its downside where you can't conduct your battle phase. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. And then we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, its potential and what I personally think uh, should happen to this card. So first off, we have number 11, Big Eye. So uh, obviously you can take your uh, your opponent's most powerful card that, you know, you normally wouldn't be able to get over. You can make things like Draco Sack, which can actually pop things and can actually give you a defensive play because the token that you didn't destroy will actually provide you with some defense. There's also decks like um, 
the artifacts that can special summon a bunch of level 5 monsters. Making double Volcasaurus can actually burn your opponent for game, which is where uh, it comes to the idea of, you know, I really wish it said your opponent can't take any damage because uh, number Volcasaurus is not going to be inflicting battle damage anyways. He's just going to burn your opponent uh, and just make a game through that anyways. And there's also other cards like Gauntlet Launcher. I mean, heck, Monarchs can actually play Soul Charge, and I don't see why you wouldn't, uh, you know, at least try one in the deck because Gauntlet Launcher is still a pretty good card. You can actually, you know, if you... Let's say you make uh, two gauntlet launchers. That's popping four monsters. At that point, you know, you've established board control. You have board presence and you've gotten rid of, you know, your opponent's monster. So that's really good. There's also Consider Pleiades, which I honestly feel like is just way too good of a soul charge because not only do you get to get rid of, you know, something that's on board right now, but it stuns your opponent. So your opponent can't actually make anything next turn. Or heck, you can go for an Evil Storm Ophion. And then at that point, uh, you know, your opponent can't really do anything. They don't have a rebuttal play. It goes back to the idea where you're just stunning them and that downside to soul charge does not actually exist. Heck, there are so many Quasar variants with Soul Charge because Lone Fire plus, you know, another monster can equal, uh, you know, Quasar without Soul Charge, but then you can make double Quasar, and at that point, your opponent just loses. Like, uh, it's very difficult for most decks to deal with a double uh, shooting Quasar. Heck, there's builds, if you happen to have Soul Charge, you can pull off a triple Quasar, you know, and at that point, it's just absolutely ridiculous in the game. I mean, heck, this card shot up like five times in its price simply because, uh, you know, you can really utilize it with Soul Charge, and also that's because, you know, it's a card that hasn't had a reprint, and we all thought it was going to get reprinted eventually. Uh, I really thought this card was getting reprinted in the Dragons of Legend, because this is definitely a legendary dragon. Um, but next up we have 101 and the Excitonite. These cards just give significant advantage into the game. I mean, this card basically gets rid of Beals, and I feel like Beals was going to be a card that was going to, you know, kind of put up a big fight in the game, but, you know, this card is just a real easy card to make, and it gets rid of Beals so darn quick. And this card also gives you mad advantage, because uh, some people were saying that, you know, if you top deck Soul Charge, it's not that good. I was like, wait, wait, what are you talking about? This card, you know, Exciton Knight is a thing. You can uh, top deck this, and, uh, well, top, you top deck Soul Charge, and then, heck, you can make an Exciton Knight for only two 2000 popping the entire board and then you know your opponent's next turn heck uh, maybe they don't ha they still have a bunch of cards you can you know, pop the field again that can be pretty nasty to actually run into and I actually saw a player that pulled off a, a mech equip engineer and this in the same term and uh, that way he was able to actually protect his Exciton Knight an additional turn and that allowed him to pop the field once again so I think that that can be a pretty nasty little play I mean I mean sure you'll have to spend 4,000 life points to you know do this but I mean it's a one card to keep yourself back in the game and you're gonna be able to actually win Another really strange win condition is Cannon Soldier. I feel like this card with the Heretic Dragon, since you're tributing them, that triggers them, then they bring out more cards, and then it just, there's just too many things that Soul Charge opens up the doors for. And there's so many OTKs and FTKs because of Soul Charge, and I really feel like it should have had that effect where your opponent uh, doesn't take any damage, regardless of its battle effect, you know, anything. Um, I really think that that should have been uh, an effect. I'm glad it says you can't conduct your battle phase. But um, I honestly would like to know what you guys have to say about Soul Charge. Do you guys think it's going to be banned, semi-limited, or limited? Personally, for me, I don't see it getting banned because it supports Pendulum Summon just way too much. I feel like, if anything, I feel like it might just be down to two. And I still think at two, it's still too good of a card. But I feel like that's what they're going to do, and then people are going to complain about it again. And then it'll just go down to one, and then maybe it'll get banned after that. But I really feel like, because Pendulum Summons are going to be coming out into the game, it, I still think it's going to be viable like at one. I don't think it's going to be a ban worthy card well to me it's a definitely a ban worthy card but i don't think in konami's eyes it's a ban worthy card because it supports pendulum summons too much uh so like i said i'd like to know what you guys have to say about this uh do you think it's gonna be banned limited semi-limited whatever but as a side note just for you know fun and giggles uh if you guys didn't know soul charge actually has the same artwork as null and void it's just altered very slightly i mean the effort into this was very very small i mean all i did was just zoom in on the image just as just lightly then they went into Photoshop, turned the uh, the hardness of their brush down, got that color, and just threw it on there. And then like half half the card you can hardly see where you know it was totally just null and void. There's actually a bunch of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh where they actually kind of just swap the artwork. But like I said, it's just there for fun and, and giggles. But yeah, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are on Soul Charge in the future because. In just a few more weeks, I feel like probably within the next three weeks, we will be seeing some of those fake ban lists. And then in one of those fake ban lists, of course, we're going to have the real one. And I definitely want to know what happened to Soul Charge because I hate getting sacked with Soul Charge. It's, it's mostly because of this card. I swear, every single time I make something super good, this card comes out and it's like, oh, nope, that's mine. Every time I BLS, it gets sucked up by this guy over here. I feel like this card uh, should be uh, a card that gets banned because... 
But I know, that's a video for another day. That's a different topic. We're talking about Soul Charge today. But anyways, like I said, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And t tell me why. Don't just say, I think it should be banned. But I'd like to know your reasons. Maybe you know about some other archetypes that are really going to support Soul Charge in the future. And therefore, it could be more of a reason why you would think that this card tactically would not be uh, banned or may not even get hit at all. Maybe it'll be at three forever and we'll still have Stratos banned. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Asian Eyes, signing out.